Hi, my name is Taylor Kalen, and welcome to the third and final episode of my podcast, Unwind. On Unwind, I'm going to be talking about all things self-care. Last time, I talked with freshman Adeline Soma about her experiences with FOMO, toxic relationships, and toxic friendships, as well as how she handled these issues. Today, I will be talking with my friend and guest, Margaret Barrett, on how technology and social media has affected her mental health. As technology grows over the years, it has different effects on society, some being for the better and some being for the worse. If you walk around the high school for just a day, you will see students and faculty with phones, AirPods, laptops, etc. They may not realize it, but by purchasing these items, it has boosted our society by stimulating the economy. But that's not the only way it helps. Technology also helps create efficient production, simplifies transactions with apps such as PayPal, and also creates new forms of currency such as Bitcoin. Alongside boosting the economy, it has also boosted social lives. Speaking for teens my age, I don't think I'd have a social life without technology. Technology and social media has opened a huge opportunity for socialization worldwide. It allows me to communicate with my friends through texting, calling, and FaceTiming. It also makes making plans easier and overall improves socialization. Technology has allowed for teens to stay connected with each other, get inspiration, and stay occupied. Lots of teens, including myself, find themselves mindlessly scrolling through social media and tech. In what feels like seconds, hours have gone by. Although it helps people stay connected, technology can cause disconnectedness from the real world. Technology has similar problems to the real world, one big one being bullying. Personally, over the years I've been online, I have experienced cyberbullying, and it can be really hurtful. I see cyberbullying online all the time. According to security.org, the chances of kids being cyberbullied, specifically teens, is very high. With a 79% on YouTube, 69% through Snapchat, 64% through TikTok, and 49% through Facebook. And with the usage of these apps increasing on the daily, we can only assume that these numbers have gotten higher. Cyberbullying is a massive problem in the US, with more than 59% of teens saying they've been cyberbullied. 37 of those teens so they've also developed some form of anxiety from this cyberbullying. Dataprot.net also states that as of 2017, cyberbullying increases thoughts of suicide by 14.5%. Even without cyberbullying, technology and social media can affect mental health. Speaking from experience, it can really hurt to see others who are just having fun all the time, traveling, and just seeming like they have no issues. It's important to remember that videos are not fully true and that they are not showing you everything. Everyone has their ups and downs, and no one has a perfectly great life. For me, the biggest negative of technology is procrastination. Even before technology became a big factor in my life, I have been a huge procrastinator, but when I added it to my life, it only got worse. With tech, I feel the need to always be online in fear of missing something, or just out of pure boredom. Overall, technology and the media has its ups and downs on how you use it, so you need to make sure you use it wisely. Anyways, enough about the statistics, let's get into the interview. Margaret Barrett is currently a freshman at Corning Payne Post High School. So tell me a bit about yourself, Maggie. Well, like Taylor said, I am Maggie Barrett and I'm a freshman at Corning Payne Post High School and I'm happy to be here. Great, so let's start the interview. I'm gonna start off with pretty basic one. How has your relationship with technology evolved over the years? Well, I was definitely an iPad kid when I was when I was younger. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I've definitely used more technology over the past few years. How do you think it's impacted your overall well-being? It helps me communicate with people, make plans, and talk to people I probably never would have thought I would ever talk to before. How do you think you use technology to improve your life? Well, technology has definitely improved my life because I I use my phone like a lot and it definitely helps me because I like I write like everything in there. Like in my notes app I write like everything. <laughs> yeah, I have some <laughs> weird ones in there too. <laughs> It also helps me get out like anything I wouldn't want to share with other people. I can just tell it to my phone. So you talked about how it's improved your life. Let's check on the other side. How has technology negatively impacted your life? Um, it definitely has had a negative impact on me because I am definitely a procrastinator like 
24-7 procrastination. Honestly, me too, though. Yeah, like, I literally stop doing things. Like, I'll, I'll be on TikTok and I'll keep scrolling and scrolling and I'll be like, one more video, one more video, and I'll just, I'll keep scrolling and I just forget to do things. No joke, the other day, I had to finish geometry work because who wants to do geometry work in school? And I was just going through TikTok and I was like, oh, I have to start this. But oh, there's a video of a cat. Oh no, I just scrolled for two more hours. Yeah, literally last night I was watching Friends and I was like, okay, I'll do some, I'll do, I'll shower once I finish this episode and then I'll keep watching episodes. Yeah, no, it's definitely such a horrible addiction. TikTok, mm -hmm. oh my god. TikTok, bro. <laughs> I could go off about TikTok. I think my screen time a week is like, ten, not a week, a day is like 10 hours yeah. just because of TikTok. Oh my gosh, yes. Anyways, so I know you go to camp and you're not allowed to have phones there, right? Yeah, so basically I go to this camp in Connecticut. It's a sleepaway camp and I go for around two months per summer and I've been going for, I don't even know, like eight summers or something. And so basically we don't, we aren't allowed to have phones there. Like no phones, no connection to the outside world. It kind of sounds like a prison, <laughs> but like- I know, like what? <laughs> but it's not, I swear. It's the most fun I've ever had. So such long time without social media technology. How do you think it's affected you? Like, do you enjoy the time without it? There's ups and downs. I feel like, like it definitely brings me closer to other people at camp and I'm not on my phone all the time, but I also, some like, I miss the people outside. I can't communicate with them. So how do your friendships at camp look compared to your friendships here in Corning? Well, at camp, it's definitely a lot different because I feel like they're like my family because I live with them, I cook with them, I do everything with them. And here at Corning, it's like, I'm just like friends with them. I see them at school. I see them on the weekends, but I don't actually like, I don't see them as a family. So when you're at camp and don't use technology, how does it make you feel? Um, I definitely think it's a lot harder to cook at camp because we don't get to use stoves or like gas. We get, we have to use fireplaces or like, um, fire pits yeah and like a match and a matchbox i also have more time to do other activities other than using my phone like reading or like writing letters to my loved ones and my friends at home um more on the topic of reading i definitely read a lot more this summer this past summer than i think i've ever read in my entire life honestly <laughs> I think I read at least like five books and I would never have thought that I would ever read that much. I don't think I've even read that much in like three years <laughs> to be honest. Like when I got home I kept reading like I still read and I used to hate reading so much but now I find joy in it because I actually found books that I like. So you think camp it's it can be more relaxing because of these activities? Yes definitely. So, other than reading and writing, is there any other activities you like to do when you're off technology or at camp? Um, we swim, we hike, we bike, we do boating. And with these activities, we do these trips. We do bike trip, hike trip, and canoe trip. And this past summer, I went on a bike trip with some of my friends. And they are supervised by counselors, so we're not just wandering around doing whatever. So we do have a GPS system, but we aren't allowed to use it. The counselors have to. And it's definitely weird to see people with phones, because like, I'll look at someone and they'll see a phone in their hand, and I'll be like, wait, am I like, I feel like a time traveler. Like I see someone with like this thing in their hand, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> it's like I haven't, because I haven't touched one in so long. It's just so strange. So, kind of getting off the topic of camp, what has been your best year as of recently in terms of your mental health? Probably last year, 2023, because I've made a lot more like friends and connections, and my mental health has definitely been a lot better. Whereas in like COVID, it was a lot worse. How do you think being cooped up like during COVID affected your mental health? 
Well, I didn't really have a lot of friends. Like, I feel like after the lockdown, like, I couldn't really see anyone. And that definitely affected my mental health a lot. I know we already kind of got into this. How do you think technology impacts the relationships we form? Well, I have a bunch of friends that I talk to a lot on, like, Snapchat and messages. And I think that definitely helps me get closer with them and in person like it will help me get closer with them in in person even though you're talking to them online like you form a better relationship online that you can then use in person yeah um also on the topic of like people do you think humans are coming more reliant on technology um yeah i definitely think so because i think a lot of people are using it a lot more recently social media has definitely been a big problem with this and i think that children like younger generations have been seeing things on social media that are definitely too mature for their age like you know how the kids at sephora like the 10 year olds at sephora they use things that are horrible for their skin yeah like seen tiktoks about it and I'm like, this is insane. And it has to do with like parenting and stuff like that, but it also has to do somewhat with, with technology. Media. Yeah. Yeah, technology. And how they see stuff and they're like, oh my god, this is popular. I need to get it. Mm hmm. And they shouldn't be getting it because they're so, they don't have mature enough facial They don't have mature skin. Yeah. I know what you're looking for. Like, girl, you do not need drunk elephant retinol. That is for, like, repairing wrinkles and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's just crazy. And literally, technology has made kids so mean these days. Like, what? Oh my goodness, yes. They think that they own the world. I and they're spoiled. Girl, you are seven years old. You do not get the right to push me out of the way to get your drunk elephant retinol and bronzing drops. Mm-hmm, like, what? So I know with reliancy on technology becoming bigger, I know it can be hard to balance real world versus digital world. How do you say you balance the two out? I know a lot of people think that it's hard to balance them, but I think it's easy for me because I'm able to set limits in my head for technology and real life things like reading and cooking and stuff and eating, obviously. <laughs> But yeah, I definitely think I'm a lot better at it than other people. I'm not even glad. This might not sound very healthy, but I think eating is one of my favorite hobbies. <laughs> is there any like other hobbies that you have when you're not doing those things? That sounds really mean. Oh my god. I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying Maggie eats a lot, but it's a good hobby. <laughs> So I have a few other hobbies too, like I play volleyball and lacrosse and definitely when I play volleyball or lacrosse, I get my mind off of electronics and technology because I can get my head in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. High school musical. Get your head, get your head, get your head in the game. <laughs> Anyways, so I know you said you don't really struggle with cutting out technology, but I know a lot of people do. So do you have advice for people who are looking to cut out technology but just can't figure out how? So some advice I would probably give to someone who's trying to cut out technology or use less of it in their life would probably be, well, let's see. Uh, here's an analogy for you. So I'd say electronics and technology are kind of like alcohol or like drugs. Like you can have an addiction to it. The same as you can have an addiction to technology or like your phone or something. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. But I think that to get your mind off of it, you could do other activities other than going on your phone or your computer. You could read or cook or do anything really other than like going on your phone. You really like to read and cook, don't you? <laughs> I do, I love cooking. Cooking is my favorite. I also think that you could try to like ease your mind off of it by using less and less at a time like you could make limits for yourself like there's there's some tools on your phone or your computer that can help you do that making time limits okay so keeping on the topic of 
like being addicted to technology, why do you think technology is so addictive? Well, we can start on the topic of television. We'll get we'll get into social media and games and stuff in a minute. But I think there's a bunch of shows that are so binge-worthy. Like I have to watch them. I have to keep watching and watching and watching. And I think that's what causes most of my procrastination. There's also some games that I play. Like let's talk about video games. Like there's so many video games on like my I have a PS5 at home. There's so many video games, like, I've been playing this one game, uh, it's like a Spider-Man game, and I, there's just, like, not really, like, an end to it, you kind of just have to, like, pause it and come back to it, so, like, there's not, like, chapters, like, in a book, there's, like, chapters where you can just stop, but in a video game, there isn't really, like, that type of stopping point, you just have to keep going and going, so I think that's also a big cause of my procrastination. There is also like social media and like on Instagram, I feel like I could scroll for hours or on TikTok. Oh my God, TikTok. <laughs> Bro, literally, it's so bad. I have a little too much screen time. And like, I won't even do my classwork sometimes. Like I'll be in school and I'm like, I'll do it when I get home and I'll just scroll on like reels or TikTok and then just get nothing done. Mm-hmm, totally, it's it's so addicting. Attention spans have really gotten shorter, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, if you give me a hook, I'll be stuck for like hours. Totally. It's horrible. Keeping on the topic of social media, do you think technology and social media has affected your self-esteem in a negative or positive way? I think there's two sides to it. I think mostly positive though, because I feel like I can post things on Instagram or TikTok and not feel like judged or less confident in myself. Really? I'm the complete opposite. I feel like I see so much like hate going around that I get nervous to post and like what are they going to think of me if I post this? I agree with that honestly, but there also are some positive sides that I talked about. Yeah, honestly, everyone I was on Instagram and for the new year, everyone was posting like dumps of their pictures and I made one and I was like, it took me, I think two days to post it because I was so nervous that people were gonna judge me for how I formatted my pictures (laughs) or my caption. Yeah, I definitely think a lot lot of people are judgy in that sort of way and mean, but there's also some really nice people. Yeah. They like, some like TikToks I post are like cute little pictures of me or something, and and they'll just like some of my friends will be in the comments and be like, "Oh, you're so cute, you're so adorable," and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much!" Like it's so sweet to like feel that. I was actually scrolling through your TikTok. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. No, 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 no. Like a video came up and I just decided to look through it. I was going through it during uh, geometry, I think. Uh-huh. And I saw a picture of you from here when you were a baby and I was like, aww. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cute. Oh my god. With all like the judge and hate online, I think cyberbullying is a big problem. What do you think? I definitely think there's a lot of mean people out there and it's a lot easier to get into contact with them on, it, on social media. Yeah, so... I've experienced cyberbullying, have you? Mm Mm-hmm. How do you think it's affecting you and other people? I know that cyberbullying has led to deep thoughts about depress- like, you could get depression or, like, you could have anxiety about something, and you could definitely have lowered self-esteem. Alongside, like, self-esteem getting lowered, I know a lot of people tend to get envious or jealous when they're online. Do you think that statement applies to you? So... Whenever I'm, like, I'll be on Instagram or something, I'll be looking at some of my friends' Instagram posts or TikTok posts, and sometimes I'll just think to myself, like, I want to be like her. I want to look like her. I want, I want more likes. I want more followers. Like, why can't I have that much? Why, why am I a loser? (laughs) Why am I a loser? I don't know, maybe because her name's Maggie Barrett. Anyways, whoa. (laughs) <laughs> that was a dirty look. At least I'm not a nerd. What? You're literally in all the same level classes as I am and have the same grades as me. Okay. You're a nerd too. Mm. Anyways, I was going to say, I definitely get a lot of 
like jealousy online, seeing what people are doing. Like a lot of my friends were supposed to go sledding, but I couldn't go because I didn't have a ride and I was like, oh, wish that was me out there with them. Honestly, that kind of sounds like self-centered. Ugh, I wish that was me. Like what? You sound like your mom. <gasps> don't, don't bring her into this. You literally said the exact same thing your mom would say and also in the same tone your mom said. Anyways, enough about my mom. Thank you so much for answering my questions, but I think it's time to wrap up. Aw, oh, shucks. Well, thank you for chatting with me about your time with technology and how it's affected you. It was great talking with you, Maggie. It was great talking with you, too. Thanks for letting me be in this interview. Of course. Today, me and my guests talked about technology's effects on mental health. Unfortunately, this is the last episode of One Wine. But just because it's over doesn't mean you should stop practicing mental health and self-care. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. Remember to take care of yourself. I'm Taylor Kalen, and this is my podcast, Unwind. <laughs>